Up for three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome back, Mere Mortal Lines, to another edition of the Mere Mortals. We've got musings today. Musings is where we go a little bit deeper in deep conversations with a light-hearted touch for you Mere Mortal Lines. Uh, one over here. Chiron, the learning meister. The learning the meister side. over here. And we're going to nah, be talking... I'm more the student. The student. Yeah. Good, good. I mean, that, doesn't that fall in line with the learning master? Well, nah. if, you, if you're a really good student, you're a learning master. I perhaps, suppose so, yeah. Perhaps. Um, what do they say? Like eternal student? Mm, something like the that. The eternal <laughs> student, correct. So today we're going to be talking, we've just been insinuating into it, about learning, specifically the art of learning, um, which is the same, funnily enough, <laughs> the title of the book that I'm currently reading, which is... Uh, Who'd Josh, it? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Who uh, would Josh Waitzkin's book, The Art of Learning. And this was actually a book that was my a yearly goal book. Yes. I went, weirdly enough, I'm one of those individuals who I don't want to go and read like an old book. I don't know what it is, but I have this innate well, thought that, oh, if it's really old, it's probably already been superseded by another idea or it's been amalgamated by another much better book. That's kind uh, of like where okay. it comes to. So gotcha. let's just say... How, like, how old is old for you? you know, like, like anything before 2000, I feel like, nah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So I, I kind of, I, my mind goes to, if it's something like in the 90s, it's either been superseded or amalgamated into another book, which is the usual case, right? Like, you know, somebody will take the best bits of out of different books and then amalgamate it into another book or into another idea and maybe, like, crystallize that, that theme more. And that's been my, like, general thinking of, oh, yeah, that's an older book. It's probably been already picked up and it's in the real new books. But the more and more I read, the, the less the case that, that actually ends up. Or it's sometimes nice to be able to get it from the original source material and make your own sort of mind up from that as well yeah uh, for me it's it's the opposite i i minimize or well i i don't go i don't assume that mm. new books uh, have any more anything more valid in mm. any, if anything i would say they're they're slightly more deluding in some mm. cases because you can try and add too much stuff you can you know there's a reason and it's a good filtering mechanism mm. if it's lasted for 150 years as a book and, and people still talk about so it. Probably a reason. Probably for a good it. book. Probably a reason for Whereas it. Whereas yeah. if you're just grabbing something off the shelf from nowadays, how long is? Uh, let's take a, a very popular one, for example, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck mm. by Mark Manson. Will that still be around in a hundred years? Maybe. Maybe. But, but, maybe, but maybe, not. maybe it was just a flash in the pan. Sure. Yeah, you know, exactly. Who knows? Um, although there are, look, let's say we're talking about books. There are some books which are real old, and people be like, "Oh, it's really yeah. great." Gulliver's Travels or something like that, and being like. Mm, Mm. No, thank you. It's not to this today's age, I guess. Yeah. So. Um, although I, I read it and, and it was okay. I didn't. I didn't mind. Okay, that. but not like. Oh wow! It was like freaking amazing. Yeah. It it depends case. on the person. So the art of learning, Josh Waitzkin. Um, what is it about? What's that book about? It's literally about the art of learning, and I'll do a book review uh, shortly. Probably be after this video actually comes out. Yeah. But um, from it, it got me interested just to have a conversation about how we actually learn, just like as a. What are some of the steps we might take? Some of the ideas behind our learning. We've done podcasts a little bit similar in the past, but I thought maybe let's go deeper into it. Mm -hmm. The book itself, The Art of Learning, is... And do you know much about Josh Waitzkin? I'm pretty sure I read that book. I, I, so as much as, as you mm. know about him, used to be... was was called like the next Bobby Fischer, so he was mm. a chess prodigy, and then you know became very, very good at that, and then started transitioning away from chess and into different areas and i've seen one tim ferris's exactly. a couple of times exactly. and, so yeah. and then the whole book is just centered around him showing going through his life sort of his life story of going from chess to tai chi it was tai, called push hands push hands which is a the martial art practice of tai chi shuan or whatever it's called um so it's basically, basically two people standing together and mm -hmm. then there's a like a quick react movement and they have to push the other person off off balance so yeah it's, I, I, it's I very kinda, short movement i kind of thought about it because i'm watching a bit of it it's just like a like a lighter version of proper wrestling i guess like it's a lighter version of proper <laughs> wrestling. Will, i'm not even sure i'd call it wrestling like there's no grabbing at all there it's, is 100 percent. Uh, have, have you seen um oh, oh sorry i watched oh. the 2004 world championship uh like world, the one where he champion. wins right yeah, yeah and it's like proper they grabbing? Like grabbing yeah they're grabbing and throwing it's supposed to be more about the ebb and the flow and that but it's kind of eventually to that and it's supposed to be i'm just reading about it in the book um anything between the shoulders to the hips that's all you can sort of grab onto okay. and you can do they even do strikes they even do strikes as well which i was like what yeah, the hell it's been it's been a while since i watched that video and look, so, i have yeah. any i have no i have literally no idea of the rules apart from the fact that i know you can get points for throwing your opponent 
uh, landing outside of the circle and making and them stop. something else. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but by no means here are we talking about how, how good we are at push it. I'm not. I have not done any of the art of learning around that. Um, but yeah, just just more. I'm not going to delve into the actual book itself, but it just made me think. Hmm, what are some concepts around uh, learning that either you've picked up along your your ways, like learning languages or learning, you know, a new theme that you want to get into? Um, and I thought I might actually get started in this because one thing that I'll, I'm going to say now that I'm not doing well in my normal uh, art of learning. I've felt like I've been good at learning a particular concept. Um, I'll point it to something like using Adobe. Uh, Premiere Pro or um, After Effects or something like that. I've often find myself that my art of learning there has been more uh, on demand when I need it as opposed to learning absolutely everything. And what's that eventuated to for me is when I need to go do something, I'll learn through quite quickly around a particular point. So let's just say titles, creating titles within Premiere Pro or on Photoshop. I'll generally be able to very quickly go and be like, oh, this is kind of what I want go do a quick little download of say half an hour usually in videos maybe in playing around but it'll be a combination of how yeah, i'll put it this way learning what the rules are of the game or the scenario then putting it into play with those exact rules and then once i do that well enough quickly like deviating well like, okay how else can i play around with these particular settings get to something but it's kind of on demand and i can quickly iterate through that get something awesome so in a premier pro or the photoshop world it's like, okay, I've done that. So I, I wouldn't say I know how to use Photoshop, not even close. But for the particular things I needed to, I'm like, oh yeah, I know how to do it very quickly and I can learn very quickly from that. But that same application, I haven't been doing the cryptocurrency or to NFTs. What I've been doing there as opposed to like kind of on-demand knowledge or putting through of the, okay, what are the rules of the game, playing around with it, and then just then kind of moving on from there and really learning through it. I haven't, I kind of been stuck at the, I didn't even go through the first phase of like learning what the rules are. I started, like if you know if you really pressed me for it and went like, okay, how exactly does you know a smart con smart contract interact with an NFT, or how does that actually work with uh, the different layers and the networks and some of the sequences that go through? It? I wouldn't have a clue to really begin properly to like be really defined with it. I've played around with it, and that's helped me learn somewhat. But I think there's some deficiencies in my learning there, where if something else came up, I feel. It's probably specifically the principles are not there for me. Not yet, not enough. And it's because I also find myself just being so like kid in a candy store, looking at like everything, being like, oh, this is new, this is cool. Oh, this is new, this is cool. And not really being on demand, being like, oh no, what, what do I care about in finding the principles to then be able to apply it elsewhere? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sure about that? Because, you know, you, you didn't go super deep into, like, it's not like you learned about how pixels work. In, in you know it's not like you learnt what the different color gradations came from and how that interacts mm. with this and you know you weren't learning about the artistic merits mm. of this slide going for you know a two second transition versus a one and a half one cent, second transition you know all that, all that sort of stuff I think I'd probably say like say back to the I mean the Photoshop one it was like let's say I wanted to get a text on the video. And then I wanted to go a little bit further to be like, oh, how can I make this text be a cinematic text? Mm. So I went down the path of like, what's cinematic? How do you create those texts? What are some of the examples? Then follow those examples exactly and being like, okay, cool, that's what it looks like. And then knowing what those exact settings are and the look of it, I'm like, oh, okay, what if I change, play around with this particular setting? What if I play around with this sort of bevel to it? What if I, in, like this introduction, what about these seconds? What about a delay on it? So then I play it around with it. But there was from structured to a little bit less structured, but still knowing like those basic mechanics where I wouldn't say I confidently know the basic mechanics of cryptocurrency or NFT. I know about it, like I can converse about it because I think I've just been in it now for like a little while, but to know the basic concept, I really push. I don't know if I would say effectively that I have. And so my, my learning aspect of it might be uh, reduced there. Well, I'm just wondering if learning is the correct word for that. So with the on-demand stuff, it sounded like you were more doing it was mm. a real driven purpose. You needed this pretty much immediately. Is would that be defined as as learning, or you were, you know, when I when I think of learning, I think almost more of obscure knowledge in a way, mm. something that might not particularly help you. It might not be something that you're going to use in the moment. Mm. So, or or something that 
is just a a step that you need to to have to be able to get to the next step mm. so those ones definitely seemed, seemed like the step is the step you, you're learning this to be able to just do that thing mm. whereas if you're learning something like english grammar when you're uh, two years old and uh, two years old in, in grade two mm. that is no one talks about grammar nowadays you you don't know it i only slightly know of it because yep. I'm learning other languages mm. but my English grammar if you pressed me on certain points I'd be like I don't know mm. yet I have learnt that at some point just enough to be able to then get to the next step of being able of to form to a next... sentence and constructing mm. it so, yeah, yeah that's a good point I, I guess I I'm just thinking yeah for me learning so from the well, like art of learning for me learning would be enough to turn information into knowledge so not just simply like if you give me a word in, in Russian and I say it, that's not, I have learned Russian. It's, I know how to say a word in Russian, in Russian, mm. or like at least try to pronounce it. But to learn Russian, I would say, I guess, turning that information, which is known, into knowledge that you can actually articulate and put together. So in the example of the Photoshop one, I would say it's, it's known to everyone that there's settings there to be able to create these things. I guess now I have, I, I, I went through a little, very, very minute process of going of, learning about it and some of the concepts around it and turning into knowledge of, oh, I understand why they call this cinematic and why this setting changes this and how you put the video behind it or in front of it or bevel it or darken it. I have like the understanding of, oh, I can now extend it even just be beyond that. So like even these other settings that I haven't played around with, oh, I kind of get how they might apply to this one. Hmm. Where, and again, this, this might be wrong, with NFTs, I could tell you what polymatic is. Matic. I could tell you what um, Hive is as a, oh, it's a cryptocurrency. But to put it into knowledge base of, oh, this is the application of that and this is how it might be used. This is the typical users of it. This is the typical users of it. I don't know if I could tell you that. Mm. Like, I don't know if I could confidently say that. Even to like, they're very big ones. Like if you, if you were to say like you or me to say, what's Bitcoin useful? Right, that, that, that question. You could answer it somewhat, I think, in terms of, Sure, it gets used in podcasting 2.0. It gets used to transfer money. Um, but I've never, but apart from spouting out the information, I don't know if I have the knowledge to say like, oh, it's used by these people for this reason, by this way, and to almost like if the settings change, so, you know, if it goes from Bitcoin to Ethereum or Ethereum to Matic, sure, like there's some superficial reasons that I might know of knowledge at a very like scratch surface level of transactionally it's faster. Mm. Uh, perhaps security is different. But to really like have the knowledge of like what are they actually going to be useful or being useful, dude, I have no idea. Like genuinely would have no idea. So I would say that my learning of turning information to knowledge that's applicable to, to me and to know and have conversations wouldn't be well well done there. Yeah. And I, I actually found that in the last couple of months that I applied my learning of DAOs or you know NFTs and now Web 3.0, I'm still just like I'm just scratching the surface. Like I'm watching videos, sometimes applying it, sometimes not. But it's not leading me to get to like knowledge, to like actual knowledge. And I, I don't know if it's because perhaps this concept of Adobe versus this comparison, it's just much bigger. And so it's like, okay, maybe it's, it, have, it would have to be in it for a lot longer to be able to really call it as like, oh, that's knowledge. Yeah, okay. Type of deal. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, let's maybe jump back to the, the art of learning. So there was, there was two things that, I, I, that jumped up when you were just talking then. One would be, the the book I guess is is sort of meta in a way because he's talking about learning how to learn mm. so that's the other way you could spin this so that is being able to come to a completely new topic so I think it, learning is is just a a general process everyone sort of understands that you know it's mm. essentially acquiring knowledge being able to implement it you know um, being able to teach it to other people that's mm. generally good science that you've learned something um, but learning how to learn sort of implies that you you're knowing how to do it better so mm. you're knowing how to do it more efficiently quicker with a deeper understanding than mm. someone so let's just take two people they both do it we both uh, start learning about Total um, random that yeah, we both something a flower in the amazon yeah yeah, yeah 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 flower in the amazon botany who could get better at that and have more knowledge of that mm. with the same amount of time essentially um mm. So maybe we'll start off with that one. And then the other one is the art, which is how much of that should be based on metrics and numbers and, you know, processes and things like that. And how much of it is more 
you have to treat each subject differently that you're trying to learn. Mm. For example, if I'm learning about botany, is that different than how I should approach learning how to handstand versus how to swim mm. versus how to construct an engine? Yeah, and, and well, actually one of the sort of the, a little point there, so again, the art of learning, I actually kind of felt like while he, it was meta, it actually wasn't so much about learning. Like, yes, it was to a point. <laughs> Fucking useless book. <laughs> it was more about the art of mastery because the yeah. more and more he talks about it, like uh, there's these themes of, you know, uh, numbers not for numbers and building smaller concentric circle, uh, like smaller circles and building, you know, the ability for you to be so good at something that you can be unconsciously doing most of it but then being conscious about really, really specific things. So that, yes, all of that is learning parts but actually if you read it more it's actually it's more about mastery like how, how to become like a really great master at a particular thing and then how to build your triggers etc it wasn't actually as much about the art of learning the actual learning perspectives so uh, maybe I vote down Josh on that one but he, <laughs> it, was a, it was a good book about mastery so yeah, okay. I, would, I would spin that um, but I, so, and that's why I think it's slightly different that conversation of yeah if you were to learn swimming versus about a flower in the Amazon would you apply the same techniques? Mm. Would you apply your same art, do you think? Do you have I wouldn't. one? I wouldn't. Personally, wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Because those are two different things. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? A neutral thing. Okay. It's, it's yep. just a thing. Um, so I, I would say, you know, if, uh, if I was swimming, I would probably want to be more physically active with it. So once again, it's, it's nice to know the movements, the mechanics of the shoulder, how that relates, how you'll want to be increasing your efficiency with the stroke and whatnot but unless you're actually going into a pool and actually swimming and feeling it mm -hmm. you're not going to have that much okay. um, so I would I would want to be more physically active in okay. that part maybe uh, with the the botany and so just just pause you back on swimming though would you care so let's just say or maybe yeah with the swimming let's just say would you care about learning the technique like the, the minutia, the fundamentals of the technique first or would you care about just physically getting into it and just learning as it goes? Uh, maybe I can get onto that in a, in a second. Okay, yep. um, I, I guess the, like, the point I'm trying to make is it, for the botany one, I'd probably want to be spending more time learning Latin names of flowers. I'd probably want to be spending more time on visual acuity of being able to see, uh, identify mm. this and then remember lists of facts about that flower and how it relates to other things mm -hmm. with swimming uh and actually let's just talk about handstands because that's something i do know yep i, d I don't care i yeah. i don't care about the um the you know history of handstands i don't care about the mechanics of it mm -hmm. you know brendan is really into this sort of shit he'll look at diagrams of humans for hours and be like man look at this shit and this this muscle relates to this muscle yeah for me i don't care so i'm not i'm not mm -hmm learning about handstands that way i'm learning about them by just going Practice. out and practicing mm -hmm. and maybe watching some videos of people uh, suggesting things but it's it's always a video of other person people doing things mm -hmm. so i can see how that should relate i'm not researching facts i, I suppose gotcha yeah yeah, yeah. the botany one would be the opposite i'd be mm -hmm. wanting to get the book smarts up i'd be wanting to there'd be less value in you going and seeing the flower as opposed yeah, to just I mean, like knowing like reading up about yeah, the flower there, there would be there would be some value mm -hmm. there would be of coming out being able to feel it so that you could remember it so that you could visually identify oh this fern is different from that fern yep. that sort of thing mm -hmm. yes I can totally see that yep. uh, but in that case no my, my learning process would be different so I, I suppose the art of learning um, would also be able to recognize when you should mm approach a, a subject differently gotcha yeah and, and, see, and this is a good point so there's just something that was like I, I noted down a little bit and I was trying to like think it through just as you were talking about it because there's and back to the point I said about mastery I think there's there's the art of learning for like a shorter term and then there's mm. the art of learning for the mastery purpose of yeah, and I yeah. think those are two two different things definitely, because definitely. I was going to ask you a question that both, both of us know about um, engineering so if you were, let's say, um, you would have done water, some sort of water... Fluid dynamics, yeah. Fluid yep. dynamics back in the day. So, if you, let's just say, you knew you weren't going to do anything about water engineering or that particular thing, you were going to do mining and I'm um, doing, like, you know, structural buildings, you don't care. But you've got to get the thing right. Now, the art of learning there 
is you can learn how a particular, say, um, what is it, laminar flow or whatever it's called, um, you can figure out exactly, oh, yeah, this is the equation. Uh, I can remember the equation. Uh, I can understand how this number goes with this number and how this equation goes with that equation, and I can tell you if it should look right or not right. And the art of learning that could be by just repetition. It mm. could be by doing m- multiple you know, different variations of it. But you wouldn't go down to the path of learning, you know, where did that equation come from? How did it eventuate? Where, where was the, the first principles? You don't need to. Like, that, that art of learning is enough for that purpose. But I think the art of learning for the mastery level of it, so if you were wanting to be the best in the world at this, then you might go down the stretch of, okay, I want to I wanna see it. I want to experience it. I want to see the, the mechanics behind it. Then I can extrapolate from that and maybe even go beyond and figure out new, new fundamentals to it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's those two variations of it. And so this gets back to my point on, I guess, the Adobe versus, say, NFTs and crypto and all that space. I think, like, the applying of my learning mechanisms for the short-term stuff is great. Like, if I need to learn something at, like, a really quick pace that is knowledge, but, again, not something that I might need to remember in the future, like, long into the future, Mm. awesome. I've got that down pat. I could smash out any type of engineering I could ever want to do. Like, I, I reckon, even to this day, I could go to any class and probably get a seven or a six. Wow. By putting effort into it, I could do it. But believe you me, you tell me two years later to remember that, holy shit, I ain't going to remember crap. Like, I remember okay. doing uh, okay. soil mechanics. Yeah. And it was just by, like, brute force that I could, like, my art of learning of just being, like, understand some of the fundamentals quickly, apply it, words that get used, get it out. Awesome. To this day, I can remember some of them, but the knowledge didn't stick around. Right, the knowledge. Mm. If I got a refresher, maybe. But to be honest, it's not not there much at all. Uh, like, it, it's a travesty to call ourselves engineers anymore. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought about I, it. I was like, dude, like we learned. I used to. to. <laughs> we learned to be engineers, perhaps not so much. Right, that's just something that sort of dissipates away. But what I want to try the art, I think, for me, and, and this is where that this point that Josh does make in the book is, it's knowing where to become use that art of learning for continual places to become not perhaps the master but just become really good at knowing and learning and continuously being able to learn about it and that's where I feel like I'm doing a disservice for myself in that space of crypto and, and NFTs and Web 3.0 because even right now this month ago is learning about Web 3.0 and I can tell you my like approach in my mind is go watch a couple of videos perhaps listen to a couple of podcasts about it but to apply it it's not there like one that applying of it is, is just not present and two there's no sort of future look as to how I'm going to continue to just either support that or enforce it or as, as Josh puts it it's kind of like closing in the circle so that everything I learn almost falls into the unconscious side of things or the subconscious and then I can consciously keep on learning deeper and deeper and deep material at the moment like I can tell you if I don't change anything it will not go to that path I've got to be like conscious about every particular bit of knowledge that i have i just can never move beyond the basic scratch level surface of it and it doesn't mean i have to get like to the depth of it all like i don't have to be like know exactly how these things get created in the code structure mm. but just to know some of the fundamentals enough to be able to then extrapolate them to other places that yeah. i don't have sort of tight do you reckon you would say you have that because i would say you do have it in say i would have said that about your spanish mm. i would say that, that however you learned your spanish you've got practices in play that have continued that along the way. Like when we spoke Spanish just uh, not too long ago when we were out, I would say that you would subconsciously now have a lot of your Spanish sort of inbuilt. You don't think about it consciously. It's just kind of coming out. Mm. And then you, that conscious thinking of maybe specific words, you still have it, but it's less than you've like, we're just beginning. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, would you say that you applied, that your art of learning there was pretty, pretty strong? Um, I think, I think Spanish was a, a completely new thing for me. Mm. I, I think that one's, one was a real intellectual challenge, and it was it was funny the um, the amount of missteps, the amount of time I, I definitely wasted mm. learning that. You know, I would say my learning capability was was low. So, mm. like my my approach to learning then was not optimal. Mm. Definitely not. Uh, so that was. I think just so something so completely new to me that no the the 
the art of learning that I'd, I'd built up from other things. So let's just say up to that point, I'd learned how to be an engineer. I'd learned how to have some social skills. I'd learned how to play soccer, those mm. sorts of things. None of them, none of the, the fundamental stuff that. had prepared me for that. So that was one where I just had to grind away, do all the wrong things. And now I can come into German practice and go, okay, I know what's important. Mm. I know which things, I know which way of, of learning is useful for me. I know that um, spending time listening to music isn't useful. I don't, mm. that's, I'm not going to get good bang for my buck in that way. Yep. I know that uh, spending more time creating my own sentences and things like that and really focusing on the pronunciation right from the get-go, yes, that's that's okay. good bang for buck. Mm -hmm. So that one, I, w I would say no, no. Mm. Uh, here, here's a question for you. So... Let's say you've you've got um, one from, let's just say, 18 years old, and then one yep. at uh, at 28 years old, and the, I, I guess you're you're coming into a new subject and or a topic or something like mm -hmm. that, and maybe the one the young one for every five hours that he spends in spends in he learns X amount yep. X, whereas now. 28 year old one can spend one hour and get that same x amount so mm -hmm. let's just say you'll be at the same it'll take you 50 hours for young one to get to a certain level and then maybe 10 hours uh, for the next w would that the numbers can be different mm -hmm. would does that ring true to you do you think nowadays you can get to that same level quicker, quicker. than you would have when you were younger and then if so mm -hmm. how much of that is based off of processes metrics knowing is knowing yourself i guess and how much of that is like an art something that you wouldn't even be able to describe to someone else mm. because it's so particularly suited to you that giving advice is is not going to be helpful yeah i think that it's true i think that i do think that compared to 18 year old one there has been improvements in the way that i learn but i would say that it's not as much as 50 to 10 i yeah. think it would be very 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 marginal at the quick if you call it the art of learning of just picking up something being able to basically parrot it back or apply it in a very loose sense i think i could do it better but only slightly better so okay. again my comparison back to maybe the soil engineering thing i think if i got presented with the equation and then the idea behind how to I don't know, figure out the slope of the uh, dam and the water seepage. I think if it took me two hours to do a particular like knowledge piece and then do a you know a problem and then do another problem, maybe it'd take me an hour and 40 minutes. So there might be some improvements to, an, to a topic that I haven't seen to be able to quickly pick it up. What I think has become a lot better is the transferable knowledge. So or the ability to transfer knowledge broadly that i think has become a lot better so then the, the comparison let's just say pick something random um like the flower of the amazon i think 18 year old one would have gone okay say the yellow they're called x they you know maintain themselves in this type of temperature and that only that information i, I could have learned it parroted it back maybe put it in a test or something like that but transferable like make a transferable knowledge so knowledge that i can take and describe to somebody else and converse about and compare to other things if i had to get to that level i think then it would take me so long to be able to get to that level that i could have a conversation with you and, and you talking about another flower and be like, oh well you know this flower is this and connected to other points yeah i think that's just purely like an age thing just that's just like stacking of information yeah. and ideas and seeing the broad like you know the way more broadly just the ability to see the way more broadly and being like oh Actually, yeah, that re reminds me of perhaps how bamboo grows and like bamboo grows fast and this is slow and then maybe the mechanisms behind why and then you can get to sort of deeper foundations of that. That one now would be able to get to that much quicker than one then, just purely on the amount of time I've had to stack information. I think that bit of the art of learning is just that the art is the fact that you've just been doing at least trying to understand or have new ideas or linking the dots between ideas for a longer time. And so the better you become at that, the better you can do it off a new topic. I don't know if you've found that as well, but like that's one thing that when I very first started reading books, let's just say, or even taking notes on OneNote or elsewhere, it took a long time to be able to write my maxims, let's say, or other topics where I went, oh, okay, yeah, I see this connects to here. 
now those connections now that it's been happening more and more and more they just come like quick man like i was just in a in like a training session for work the other day and i'll talk about this concept in a moment but this concept got brought up and it like linked almost automatically to like seven other concepts which i'd sort of been reading and, and thinking about and i went oh cool i see how that applies to this applies to that applies to this blah, blah. i think if i that exact same concept had been presented when an 18 year old one i would have looked at it but to tell you about it would have taken me a long time to go through it and, and to describe it and then try to compare it that would have taken a long time and i think that bit of learning so information to knowledge yeah 100 percent. i'm just that's a lot better now yeah how would you say in comparison to 18 year old self to, to you now would that would be similar in some concept would you split it in different ways i think in i'd, I'd say maybe it's, it's mm, I, I hate using percentages this way let's just say i'm at 100 percent now i would have been at 80 percent. so for every uh four hours so to most to most me and more lights no, out there just so you know um <laughs> current yeah current 100 percent is only like one two percent of normal humans so i mean it's, it's definitely quite sub substandard <laughs> it's definitely substandard uh let's let's put it this way 50 if i put in uh, five hours in the past to learn something i could probably put in four hours now okay. yep that's that's what I was trying to express with my my shitty with your, with percentages. percentages yeah. You can tell I'm an engineer, people. Yeah. My, well, uh, here's a, well, here's a clear one. As you were just saying about the the music listening in German, perhaps, or practicing, you know, exact pronunciation. I think that if you'd done that as you were 18 years old, you might have spent again five hours doing it as opposed to four hours and get the exact same value at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and to to answer my own question, I would say probably 80 percent of of that jump up increase. Mm is due to processes, is due to like having better metrics, mm. is due to having a, a system in place, which I'll go over in, in, in a second, which yep. is what you asked me about before. And then 20% would be that sort of art type. So uh, why, why didn't you learn German in this last period last year? You said you were going to, uh, you know, the sort of timing wasn't right. I was focusing on other things. Sure. What, well, what, what's the art in that? You know, what's what's the art in knowing that today is a good day to, to really focus and, and get some work done, mm-hmm. and then this next day, nah, I'm not really feeling it this day. Yep. Uh, I, I, my time is better suited elsewhere. That, you know, should I learn German right now or should I stretch? This, this is actually a constant one for me. Mm. Should I be learning German or should I be doing stretching? I yep. had to make that decision this morning. I said, nah, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to focus on that. The German stuff, I can do that elsewhere. I can catch that up later during the week. Okay. Right now, it's more important to do this. What really drove that decision it was more of a feel thing than it was a gotcha, a, okay. a, yeah. like a, a pure metric-based process decision. Okay. And tell me about the, then the structure. What, what's that? Do you have a structured or particular agenda in the way that you learn? Yeah. So if if uh, you were to say, Kyron, you need to learn about this this new topic. Um, how are you going to do it? Yes. What's what's the best way? So usually, uh, I would want to be on my own for the first part. So I'm not going to immediately seek out a group or or, or a mentor or anything like that. I'm, okay. I've I've never particularly found that useful. Uni, for example, people talking to me, it, it didn't help. What how I learned was I'd read the blackboard slides, the yep. lecture slides on my own. So definitely being on my own, relatively quiet room with no distractions, um, cementing info in via writing. And how do I get that info? Well, usually I'll do multiple hours research to determine rules of thumb. So I'm looking for those fundamental things. How do you determine what's a rule of thumb? There's so much information out there. That's where I'll usually get varied sources, maybe look up things for five hours or so, and I'll try this person, this person, this person. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you have to make judgment calls on... Okay, if I'm looking to get big, mm. I'm not going to pick the weedy dude. I'm going to pick the guy who's who's big. Got the knowledge. Uh, but uh, you know, am I going to pick the guy if I want to get big? My definition of big might be different from yours. So, mm. am I going to pick Thor, the the mountain Icelandic dude? Yeah, perhaps not. No, no. Mm. I'm, I'll probably pick up a look at someone who's more my height, who's more my you know from my part of the world, that sort of thing. So I'll do that, and then I'll usually have uh, try and find out those rules of thumb, cement them by writing them down. So mm-hmm. basic stuff. Uh, an example here is handstands. Basically, you want to set up your hands the same each time. You don't you don't want to be introducing new variables. So you don't want to be going out wide. You don't want to be 
uh, spending like different time mm. playing around with things. You want to get good at a one solid handstand at the start. Don't be. And this is for me. Mm-hmm. Other people you can do might have different things, but you don't want to be playing on parallettes and then blocks and then on the floor if you're just trying to learn. No, you want to stick yeah. to the wall. Blah blah blah. So I do that, and then I'll usually have some sort of basic initial reliance on a basic or a free program. So if I was uh, learning how for German, for example, I'm just using Duolingo at the moment for just those basics. I'm going to rapidly start transitioning off that um, to find ways that are more suited yep. for my style. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll do this the same with the uh, you know blockchains and things like that. Very sources, look at this, what do I find interesting? And then I'll play around with it myself. That's mm-hmm. when I'll start playing around with Hosky and going out to meetup groups and things like that. Yep, okay, yep. Uh, then, then from then it's sort of all, all, autopilot in a way. That's mm. that's when I'm I'm just okay. Just accumu- accumulate knowledge, mm. find out what's interesting, follow what I enjoy doing. You know, get as rid of as many things that I dislike about doing it. So, you know, if I hated the environment where I was practicing handstands, okay, Change choose it. a new environment, mm-hmm. try and try and find something that makes it more fun, more mm-hmm. interesting. And then, yeah, or just auto and with some some periods every now and then of self-reflection and maybe re- research for subtle points I missed. So yeah. that's when you can come back to a, a handstand vid and you're like, oh, I, I get why he is now doing this looking at his hands mm. because this does this differently. You don't need to know that when you're just... Just beginning. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't need to know that you should be looking at your, like, leaning and looking at your, like, the hand that you're doing a one-handed, you know, yeah, exactly. handstand when, you, when you're just trying to get up with when the you, hand. Yeah, when, when you're, you're doing like, it on the wall. How do you kick up? Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. So you don't need to know. I, I like that. That was, that was super practical. I'm going to bring it up a level to the more like broader but obviously like what you just described is probably going to be um, uh, give examples of it so I won't go too much into examples have you heard of the concept of shuhari no okay so I hadn't either I hadn't either but it, it kind of makes sense it's from Japanese uh, martial arts I don't know exactly what martial arts and this is what I was saying I was in a training the other day and the guy was talking through it he's a good trainer really good dude um, and talked about the concept of shuhari in agile but I kind of saw it I went straight away like dude this is like way broader and obviously the concept of it is supposed to be broader um so and I'll, I'll get this up so make sure i don't i don't get this wrong i went that's actually maybe when i've seen my concept uh of planning go well i've seen it going in that path when i haven't seen it going that well and i don't really transform information into knowledge it goes this path mm-hmm. so uh shu ha ri so shu ri means uh obey fundamental principles ha is detach and self-recognition and re is separate and transcend. Damn. What does that actually mean, right? So basically, the it's supposed to be the evolution of whether an action or an event or how you're doing to get to an, a better place or transcending. The way that I kind of articulated that back there was shu, obeying fundamental principles. It's just basically whatever that you're looking at, just understanding the principles, like understanding the, the rules, basically, the structure. So um, if we're talking swimming, so we'll go back to the example of swimming, for me it would be like, okay, just understanding, not to the mechanical nature. Actually, I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to say handstands because I don't know how to do handstands. Okay. I'll be like a shoe, right? So do, knowing the principles. For me there, it's not learning the tip about looking at the finger when I'm doing a one-handed. No, it's the fundamentals of, hey, the fundamentals should be, you should be doing a handstand against the wall and you should be positioning your body in this way mm-hmm. and you should try and not be using, you know, pushing as much as you can out of your shoulders. That's the fundamentals of that level, at that beginner level. And it's first knowing those, those fundamental things. So shoe is get those right and so... Get them right so you can continue to do them right to an un, like a subconscious level. And so this is how it related back straight away to Josh Waitkinson because Josh, Josh's point in The Art of Learning is you should be learning enough to the point that you are doing things subconsciously and then you can focus consciously on other things while that's going on around. And that's how you can kind of make the circle smaller in what you're learning to get really precisely better at things that you want to do. Um, so first, obviously, shoot, obey the fundamental principles. Now, if I was following this, and you'll see, I didn't do the handstands. <laughs> yeah. I was just like yeah, going at it. I was just <laughs> jumping up. But if I was to go back again and be like, okay, look at this. I go, okay, follow the, the, the fundamentals. There's a reason they're there. Do the on the wall. Practice the, the actual positioning. Push, out, push from the shoulders, right? So then the second level would be actually detach and self-recognition. So the way I translated it, and they were talking about this as well, it's that's when you, you, when you know the rules, now you can start playing around a little bit with the rules. So you can go, okay, I, I, 
I'm, I can do a handstand. Okay, now now what's a detachment to go, oh, actually, if I look at my hand here when I'm doing one hand, that's that level, right? So that's where I think you're at. You're at that heart level where it's, you know, you've got all the fundamentals. You don't even think about the fundamentals when you're doing handstands anymore. You're not mm. really, sometimes consciously, you're like, oh, make sure I'm pushing up with my shoulders. Make sure I'm doing this positioning. By the yeah. by, though, I'm pretty sure what you're doing is more, you're really focusing in on that specific thing. Everything else is subconscious. Yeah, yeah. So there's that level, right? So obviously I didn't get there. But then there's you know, the final, final one, which is re of learning, of the art of learning. Uh, well, sorry, not the art of learning, just this particular concept, which is separating and transcending. And so that's, that's where, let's just get to the point that you're not just beyond subconsciously know the things that you're learning, but you, you know all the rules behind it. And then you can start almost breaking the rules or doing other things. So in the past, maybe with the hand sense, you've been like, oh, well, I really have to push out of my shoulders. Maybe you find actually... If I don't for this particular movement, it's actually even better. Mm. So you can start breaking the rules of it and going even beyond. So translating it all the way back to the art of learning for me is, okay, a good, a good way that I, I'm thinking through is, okay, just understand all the basic fundamentals. That's specific to it. Not all of them, but just specific to that particular thing that I want to do. Again, back to my point for Adobe, like, you know, learning just the basic concept of like, this is what this is, what this is. This is the cinematography feel. This is what the settings do. Awesome. Then the next level of ha would be, okay, now that you've understood that, go beyond and start going specific circles. So now I, I, if you ask me, put this title on here and make it do this, I can do that very easily. I don't even have to think about it. But if it, now I can concentrate specifically and be like, oh, what if I want to get the top part of the word to like go highlight it or be brighter than the bottom? Okay, that's a little extra learning piece. And then the relearning would be that continuation of, okay, you understand it so well, you can start breaking breaking it down being like oh well if you use this other random thing that normally isn't getting used for this you can make the same effect and now you have the freedom to do all this other stuff um, and, I, and in that sequence I feel like I just don't do that basic level of understanding the principles well enough go into action mode of doing stuff which can get you to a particular place but never beyond into the level of really knowing something in the learning and sometimes that's okay but that's where I come back to like with crypto web 3.0 that's not going to be okay. Like that's something that I want to be able to be knowledgeable on because I feel like in the future, it's going to be a massive payoff. Awesome. But the way I'm going out about it, I'm not getting out of that shoe level. It's like, I'm just like, yeah. just, I'm not even doing that well. I'm just taking actions and practicing and it's not letting me uh, evolve to go beyond that level. Yeah. So, so here's a question related to that. Mm. Learning how to learn, is it necessary? So for example, if you have lots of hobbies mm. and passions, maybe yes you want to get that productivity and that that ability to improve uh, improve quicker and, and yep. whatnot but is it how necessary is it you know would this actually be detrimental to some people to to be like hey these are the processes this is the shuhari this sort of thing yeah would it just be better for them to just you know sort of be like blissfully ignorant of it i think it would be detrimental if you applied it everywhere if you applied it everywhere you're in for some bad times, I think, because you because you just become frustrated at yourself that you can't do that for absolutely everything. But I think if you can apply, and you should apply to a few practices, a few places in your life where either you find real passion in it or where you find that you might have real success, whatever that might mean to you, or that you care about it, for sure. I think that that is something, whatever that uh, particular structure that you want to put in place, both practical or theoretical, et cetera, will play out really well. Hmm. But if you take it too far and try to apply it everywhere, then I don't think that that will pay off uh, successfully. And I think that, so Josh did not really take, talk about it in the book. And I haven't finished the whole book yet, but he doesn't really talk, talk too much about the fact of, oh yeah, the art of learning, this is how you should do it. But there's no stepping back and being like, okay, well, he did that really, really well in chess. He did that really, really well in push hands. But it's not to say that he's now the best in absolutely everything. No, that's actually not what it means. He just, he's, the art of learning, he applied to those two things and became really good. But he doesn't apply it to you know, eating cereal or something random else about his like, learning specifics. And I just think humans, like mere mortals, just couldn't have the capacity yeah. to do that all the time. Yeah. There's no way. I, I split it into conscious and unconscious. Mm. So I could get better at cooking. I spent a lot of time mm. creating my meals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But how much time have I actually spent consciously trying to get better at it? So, so, so little. little. And, yep. you know, I, I still cut stuff like this pushing it forward i know professional chefs and stuff they they do it with their fingers like this but i just haven't bothered to to spend that time 
taking a step back mm. to be able to go forward which mm -hmm. is sort of what you need to do a lot of times you need yeah. to unlearn something to relearn something better yes, yeah. to get you to this next level uh, and yeah I, I would say there's there's some things that I you know just enjoy and probably the fun would get taken out of it if I was super conscious about trying True, to improve yeah, yeah. it and, or, and, and or, or to put such structure to it I also see like great benefits in not having to take things all the way of that say in that model of shuhari or just knowing things for knowing it so there there is probably things out there let's take, like, let's take photography I learned photography from a like, so like shoe perspective I learned some fundamentals I went out and took photos I really enjoyed it I liked editing it not that I'm going to keep doing it like all the time I don't like to do it all the time it's just like it's just for fun I don't care about going all the way to evolving it and being to the point of like oh I'm, I've mastered it I'm like keep on continuously learning I don't want to do that I just find it interesting to do that yeah in other phases of it though like when it comes to a lot of fitness things gym things Olympic lifting and that all of that I, I consider all of it yeah. like, I just want to continue give me more yeah, give me more yeah. I just want to continue uh, learning whether it's the mechanics of it whether it's all the way down to like muscle fiber types and stuff like that continuously I'll continue to try and learn and I'll give up some of the aspects to learn other aspects and then kind of conglomerate them all together at the end but in that particular area of my life I'm like yes I apply that as much as I can possibly um, and probably not even enough even even though I apply so much now I still would want to apply even more even more Damn. so what area would you say uh, is one that you you think you, you've reached a fundamental level but there's no push for you to to make it beyond like from a uh, yeah. you don't apply the art of learning behind it Spanish should be there yeah. okay I've, I've, but only now only now I guess yeah well I, I've, I've, I feel like I've gotten to the the level where any more would would just it just wouldn't bring me joy mm. you know I could learn a couple of more words I could learn the dialect of of mm. maybe you know particular areas northern Colombia mm. and the slang there the way that they it's my pocho instead of like pollo or, or whatever um that was more argentinian i think but any, in any case mm. like that yeah those differences in dialect yeah. you, you you could go down that full route do i have any interest in that no i just want to be able to you know speak it crack a joke every now and then yeah. say something funny huevos or like yep. uh, and then just just yeah that i've reached that level where it's like no mas. No, mas. no more. No, mas. <laughs> no, no more. Mas. I don't need any more. I'm, I'm good with where I'm at. So yeah. that, that for me would be one. Uh, how, how about you? Any? Any other? Well, any other that would be for me fun. I mean, if, I mean said photography. Um, none that really spring to mind, although maybe swimming. Maybe swimming, although I don't do it often. I could see myself. Cause I do as a monthly goal. I've got some stuff. Oh, sorry. As a yearly goal, I've got some swimming stuff. But when I get into swimming, I do enjoy it. I do like the fundamentals and even the, the the improving of the stroke and that. But doesn't now? There's no way I'd be like, oh yeah, I want to be like notching down ten seconds of this particular time. Yeah. Or, yeah. Get my arm, my hand specifically into the water. Nah, none of that. It's just yeah. more. This is just the enjoyment of, of just being in the water and moving around. For sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So. Very good. That was good. fun, man. All right. I enjoyed Art that one. Of Learning uh, by Josh Waitzkin. I would recommend the book for sure, but uh, yeah, be in the uh, lookout for the actual book review, the proper book review that comes out. That'll be a good one. That'll be, that'll be a fun one. So I'm going to be yeah, challenging it, obviously, between the Art of Learning and the Art of Mastery, which yeah. I think you should have called it. But uh, in any case, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast, Me and Mortal Lights out there. Um, just a, a little note, we are Valley for Valley enabled. So if you haven't had the time to play around with any of those podcasts, Karen, where can they go to find some of that information yeah so you, you could do what old mate <laughs> did just before so we're out here in uh in sunny south bank as, as usual bank. and uh, i saw a guy come along he used our qr code uh he might not have used the qr code he might have just looked us Found up us. but i heard him playing one of our episodes because the music reached oh, from over no there way. Yeah, yeah. yeah i heard us i heard the intro going awesome. so i was like man this guy he's on he's it. on he's on so, he's on already so uh, your, your, your little task, your recommendation for, for today will be if you do that and you enjoy it, share it. Share it on your social media. Share it. You can just hit the wherever you are. There's always a share button, which uh, allows you to do it to Twitter, Instagram, exactly. Facebook. Whichever and, and, and that's the thing as well. So remember, so. we are Valley for Valley enabled, which means we, you know, we from a podcasting 2.0 perspective, if you can send us a boostergram, if you can interact with us through those platforms, wonderful, right? Um, but if, you, you know, if you're not there yet, for some reason, it's a little bit hard. Uh, or you don't want to get involved with it at all. Um, of course, Valley for us yeah. is also if you're sharing us, if you're telling friends about it. Um, and again, we'll call it out because I want to make sure we call it out. If you 
have no idea how to get into the space, right? Whether it's digital wallets or cryptocurrency and whatnot. Happy to help. Dude, at this point, even in not even Hotski, I'll be prepared to send people like 10 ADA. Like, I'll be prepared to send people like 10 ADA, 5 ADA, just to help yeah. them out. Like actually, here you go. Here's a starting piece. Have it, understand it, stake it. I don't even stake it, but yeah, yeah. Like, you stake it, you learn, <laughs> right? Um, I think if someone gave me 5 ADA, I would stake it. Like I would just to play around with it and be like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll stake it. Fuck it, I'm going to give you 5 ADA so oh, you can start doing it. Damn. Call you out. There you go, there you go. <laughs> By next week, I'm going to be staking all my ADA. Staking. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's all for now. Me and Mortal Lads, I hope you enjoy yourself. Wherever you are in the world, me and Mortals, one out. Karen, out. G'day. Bye.